alongside Janie um, in the Office of Standards and Instructional Support at the Department of Education. Kathy, Kathy works very closely with us on a lot of projects. Um, she's amazing and we love having her as part of our team. Go ahead and go to the next slide, please, Kathy. Um, oh, there's Janie. So I cover computer science, educational technology, um, STEM. Um, Janie and I do projects together in Canvas, digital learning, um, all that kind of stuff. Janie is back. You want to explain what you do, Janie? Or what you don't do? It might be shorter. Um, yeah, so I just, hi, welcome. Sorry, my computer just totally died. Um, I oversee areas in the same office with Kathy and Jackie in digital and distance learning, uh, social studies, multicultural education, financial literacy, and world language. Um, and with that, I don't know if Jackie has introduced Kathy, but I'm going to press record so that we do have the starting recording. Oh, Kathy's recording them. You are recording. Okay, thank you. Yes. Kathy, do you want to share anything about yourself? No. <laughs> <laughs> they already said who I was. I'm, I'm Kathy. I do a lot of work primarily with Canvas and with the other program that um, Janie's going to cover today about the NVCAP. Perfect. Um, next slide. Okay, so agenda for today, we're going to go over just some bits and pieces and then our topics, our main topics uh, for this uh, workshop really is about um, you guys are going to be the first two to actually witness and see the standards implementation framework. Um, we're going to go through some shifts of instruction and how we want to help capitalize what reimagining learning can look like. Uh, we're going to review some areas of our new model curriculum that we will be releasing in September, as well as what is the course access per partnership that we do have in Nevada. Lastly, we will review some areas of Canvas, and then we will have wrap up and a raffle. So just some bits and pieces, um, some things. So this is the admin series for the 22-23 school year. We are offering two webinars, two um, slash workshops a month. The schedule was released in the flyer, so you can actually sign up for um, one, you can sign up for three, you can sign up for all of them. Um, if you are wanting to get an um, SUU credit, you do have to follow the registration that was included in with the flyer, and you do have to attend multiple sessions that equal uh, roughly 15 hours. Um, there will be an attendance sign-in that I will actually put into the chat. Um, and then there will be an exit survey that you will um, need to complete. We need to have both parts completed to earn PL hours um, and or for SUU college credit. We did want to share with you the professional learning calendar. So this calendar in itself is a calendar that you can find on um, our website. I have put a, a link that is, that's uh, accessible right away, a little bit.ly that you can log in. And or if you have a camera, you can scan the QR code. It will go directly to our professional learning calendar and spot that we actually have on the NDE website. All of our trainings, um, all of our trainings actually for all of NDE are going to be on this calendar. And so this is something that you want to look at on a regular basis so that you can see what's up and coming. All of our admin trainings are on this calendar as well. These admin trainings are only for administrators. So school administrators, uh, district administrators, but also if we, you have administrators in training, we have a lot of districts that are where uh, teachers are in administrators in training programs. And so they can access and do these as well because the topics are extraordinarily versatile um, and they can help a lot of individuals. But we did wanna set up possibilities for our admin across the state to set up a professional learning network um, and so that individuals can meet throughout these so that they can really start to see and talk with each other, right? We can work smarter, not harder. And if possible, um, these are two hours, um, twice a month. You can turn your camera on. It's super awesome that we can just have um, people's faces. Understand if you have a bandwidth issue or you need to walk away for a second. But if possible, please turn your camera on. It's mostly appreciative because who doesn't want to talk to a black screen? So thank you. Next slide. All right, the framework is going to be in-depthly reviewed by our wonderful Jackie, Jackie McCune. <laughs> Thanks, Janie. 
Um, so just a little bit of background on the standards implementation framework. Um, up until this point, we never really had a full framework developed on um, when standards were reviewed, like a full process, when the review starts, when the adoption starts, instructional materials, monitoring, all that stuff, who's involved, all the stakeholders, all the players, everything. So this framework really dives into that and ties everything that we're talking about today together. So in the link, I just put, or in the chat, I just put a link to the standards implementation framework as it exists today. Now, keep in mind, like there might be a few things that change here and there, but the structure of it is not going to change at all. Um, there, the whole purpose of this, the framework is really to fit within this vision that we have at the Department of Ed um, for education. And you can see in that image, it's a cyclical process of, do we know that kids are, oops, <laughs> do, do we know that kids are receiving the instruction that they should be receiving? How do we know that? How do we modify if we don't? How do we know if they're really learning anything? All that like continuous cycle of reflection and improvement. Um, next slide, please, Kathy. So on the screen are the pretty much the biggest sections that are in the framework. We look at the standards. We have a communication plan. We look at implementation. We look at um, the model curriculum, like Janie mentioned, and instructional materials. So that curriculum that's out there, how and when is that stuff reviewed, created, rolled out, all that stuff. We have a monitoring um, process set up so everybody knows exactly when it's gonna happen. And then professional learning is the big thing. We're really trying hard to um, offer more professional development for all educators in Nevada around the things that are being rolled out so that it's not just, oh, here, by the way, here's something for you to do. Like we're gonna provide some professional development and background behind that. Um, so next screen or next slide. So what we would like you to do is to take two or three minutes um, and I will set a timer because I'm the worst timekeeper on the planet. I will 100% get distracted. Um, but re like glance through the framework. We're not expecting you to read it in depth right now because it is pretty lengthy, but just glance through it. If you see something that sticks out, pause for a moment, take a look at it. And we're gonna have you share out two things. First, what is something you still have a question on? Like what isn't clear? Maybe that's on our end and we need to clarify it or provide some more information um, in there. And then the second is what is something that you feel is beneficial to share either with your staff or a colleague or another administrator or um, anybody that you work with within education? So I'm gonna set a timer for a few minutes. I'm going to be quiet. And then we're gonna come back to these two questions and really dive into the framework. Hey, Jackie, I think that we can maybe give five minutes for this. And if you want to on here, if, if you want to, the link for the framework is in the chat. And if you have this wanna kind of, you can turn your video off, kind of peruse it, we'll give you five minutes. And then when you're ready to join us and answer these questions, turn your camera back on so we know you're ready. Perfect. Okay, timer's going. Hi, Holly, welcome. Um, we are just uh, reviewing the standards implementation framework. I'll put the, the link in the chat again for you. Um, and then for about four more minutes, and then we're going to um, dive in a little bit more and have a discussion around it.
Okay, that was five full minutes, actually five minutes and a few seconds. Um, let's go ahead and start. Um, when you're ready, turn your cameras back on and we'll start sharing out um, some of the things that you found in the framework. Let's start with what question you may still have in it or of it. We did not do a deep dive into it yet, so we may answer your questions as we come back. But go ahead and share your questions. Let's see. Jessica, do you want to go first? You're the first one on my screen. I um, I need a little bit longer. I don't really, right. um, at this time, have a question. I need to wait. <laughs> okay, that's fine. You might have questions after somebody else asks a question, so that's okay. fine. Okay, Casey, how about you? Yeah, one of the questions I had was, um, it said when you do the review, you get a committee together of teachers and and different different types of people in the in the um, in education. I just wondered how you find those teachers, or can teachers volunteer to be a part of this process? Um, how does that work? So for both the standards review, standards writing, and instructional materials reviews, those are all um, an application process. So an application goes out to all educators. It's usually sent to curriculum directors in each district, um, principals, whoever we may have on our email list. We want to meet or reach as many people as possible. And then they just fill out a quick Google form or Microsoft form and um, submit that they're interested depending on how many people actually apply, it depends on whether or not everybody gets selected. We have um, designation of who we want to have represented on each committee. So we definitely wanna have teachers. We like to have um, administrators on there, um, parents if applicable or family connections. Sometimes um, community partners have been part of it. RPDP, um, someone from one of the three RPDPs um, is another stakeholder group. Am I missing any, Janie? Teachers, administrators. We do parent organizations. If there's organizations that are tied to either working with um, closely with that group of standards um, and then RPDP members and then, and yeah, that's, that's typically it. It goes out to every single district, their curriculum directors, as well as, as in our newsletter. So it is open access for anybody to wants to apply to join um, uh, to the teams. Obviously, one of the biggest requirements is, is you need to have experience in that content. So if we're doing ELA standards, it would behoove you to have an ELA license or have taught ELA or you're at some connection with English language arts. Mm -hmm. Like for example, right now, um, 612 science, ELA and fine arts are all um, being reviewed, their instructional materials. And I don't recall when that process closes to apply to be part of that committee, but those were sent out to curriculum directors, I believe two weeks ago. Um, and I mean, we would prefer to be able to select from a wide group of people. We wanna make sure there's representation of all districts um, I know when I do it, I try really hard to make sure I have um, some representation from the larger districts, Clark and Washoe, obviously, and then also from the rural districts, because they all have different nuances that we want to make sure we address. Good question. Devin, did you have any questions? I think that was kind of the question that I was looking at also was about who could participate in it because I'm sure I have some staff that would want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even um, if you have somebody that is interested, they're always in the back. It is on page, page 16. We have contact information for, for everybody inside the Office of Standards and Instructional Support they're always welcome to reach out to us. Like I know Janie and I um, keep a list of people who want to receive communication from us on a regular basis. 
And Janie and I are really good about anytime any opportunities come out, sending it to everybody um, so that there isn't anybody that feels they didn't get the information or especially if they want the information. Jessica, did any questions pop up? I think I'm still soaking in. It's quite a big document. Um, mm -hmm. Not yet. I know I'll have them. Okay. I don't. Well, I would just. Oh, I'm sorry, Jackie. I just want to say to Jessica, to your point, it is, and this is something that we've never really. Um, like captured in one document to share with the state and with all educators in the state. So we're hoping that this can actually um, just per e be an easy go-to when questions do arise. I um, mean, it is a living document essentially, whereas it will probably be growing and we'll be adding addendums to it as we learn and, and as we keep changing standards and as we advance and get more um, just savvy and um, as the years go on, um, it will, will change. But hopefully it is something there where if you do have a question about standards, the use of standards, the why of standards, then you have something to now relate to. Something to remember is that the only thing we mandate in the state of Nevada is standards. That's the only really mandate in Nevada. So your teachers in all of the nine core areas in K-12 are expected, are required to teach standards. And so this is something that can actually help with, with that as you're explaining it to your staff. So what is something that you feel like you would want to share with your staff, a colleague, another administrator, um, somebody else in education in Nevada? Was there anything that really stood out at first glance that you were like, oh, this is definitely something we're sharing? Go ahead, Casey. Feel free to just unmute yourself and share it. We're a small group, so. Um, just when I saw the, the table on page six of the standards review cycle, I thought that would be really helpful and beneficial to share with the teachers so they can kind of see the cycle and it would help them, um, as they're planning curriculum, if there's changes that they need to make that they can kind of stay up on things as well. Sure. Other people have said that's really useful also. Because it's easy for someone to just say, oh, it's reviewed every eight years. Well, yes, but it's also reviewed more frequently than that. And when was the last year or, yeah. I have um, a kind of a conflict with something here. On page four, so I was, I've, whenever we talk about the curriculum, we always talk about the curriculum or the standards. And, but here the definitions are a little different. So you have the standards, but then you say the curriculum the materials and resources used for teaching the standards, but a lot of our conversations that that I've had or with colleagues or even mentors, we have to address to the teachers. You need to you need to teach the curriculum. Like the, our the standards are the curriculum because teachers get caught up in teaching the program. They think that the they think that the program. They have to teach the program, but they don't have to teach the program. They have to teach the, the standards. Oh my gosh, Jessica, it's the best question you could have asked. It's like, it's like I gave you a million dollars and said, ask this question. And if I had a million dollars, then I would So <laughs> my answer to you right now is standards are not, is not curriculum. Standards is not curriculum. So if you're saying you have to use, teach the curriculum, the curriculum is the means plus the standards. So the means includes your resources, your materials, your strategies, the ways that you're implementing to teach those standards. All teachers are required to teach standards. So you can, that's a, that is a true statement. You are required to teach standards. And you can say that to all your teachers. Every teacher is required to teach the standards. When you talk about the word curriculum, now you're gonna add in additional assets of, of which I just spoke to. You are 100% correct in saying, you that when you talk about the program, a program is not are is not standards. It's also not technically not curriculum. A program can be a piece of the curriculum, right? But it's again, it's a part of how it is that you are you are teaching and implementing uh, and having your kids reach outcomes, which would be those standards. So I always say, think of it as the standards are the foundation of a house. You're building a house. 
Standards are your, your, your bottom floor, your foundation, the things that that's going to hold everything up. The walls and the roof might be, that might be your, your curriculum, your window dressings, your door, your paint. Um, those could be programs, resources, and structural materials. You want the whole house, right? Because the whole house is going to provide shelter and it's going to look pretty and you're going to feel good living there. That's what becomes your home. But you, you got to have all the pieces to make the whole home. So words in this case, and, and this is something that you bring a good point to, whereas in education, we have allowed words to like dictate messages. And sometimes what you mean is not what your neighbor means, is not what your principal means, is not what the teachers mean. And so it's really important to, to create common language, which that's really important to us here as well, which is also why we created this document as well. So we can actually have, um, essentially a glossary and use of common language so that we can start really helping all educators in our state understand how to help kids learn and how to, to have achievable outcomes for all of our students in Nevada. Jackie, did I miss anything or anything you would like to add? No, that's it. This, I'm just going to share this um, definition, which is one that I love, um, that was shared, I don't know, a few years ago. It actually comes from the Rhode Island Department of Education. And I feel like it really encapsulates like all that goes into curriculum. It says curriculum is a standards-based sequence of planned experiences where students practice and achieve proficiency in content and applied learning skills. It's the central guide for all educators as to what is essential for teaching and learning so that every student has access to rigorous academic experiences. It's the structure, the organization, and the considerations in the curriculum, which are created in order to enhance student learning and facilitate instruction. Curriculum must include the necessary goals, methods, materials, and assessments to effect effectively support instruction and learning. So it's exactly what Janie said. It, like The word curriculum, it's more to it than just standards, or just a program, or just materials. It is the whole learning experience? That's such a great question. And maybe, I don't know, do you feel like um, maybe we need to make that definition on page four better? Long, Justin, like, like more meatier? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about better. I just think if this is the language we're gonna use, and I think we all need to have the same language. Okay. Uh, I think it's clear. I, don't, I think it's clear. It's just in some of the conversations I'm part of, that's not what is referred to as curriculum. Your standards are a curriculum. That's what, and you have the other resources. You use all the other resources to teach your curriculum, which are your standards. So that is, um, so that would be my biggest takeaway today. Yeah, I love it. And feel free to share with your staff. And if they have questions, they can always ask us. But yes, this is this is something that has been ongoing for um, years. And I think in education in general is what's is there a difference between standards and curriculum? And I would say most people do believe that they're one and the same, which in actually they're not. They are different, right? You you need standards to teach curriculum, but they're not you, they're not vice versa, right? Curriculum is so much more than actually just standards, which is then if you think about it too, when our teachers say, I need more support, like I need better curriculum, it's not because they need better standards. They need the plus other stuff, right? They need either additional resources, they need strategies to actually implement those standards. They need aligned assessments on how they can actually evaluate the, those standards. So it is the so much more, it's that plus, plus, plus that comes with curriculum. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it all makes sense. I get it. Devin, did you have anything that you thought was really valuable or something that you wanted to share? Oh, well, I liked um, the page before that, page three, that graphic about like the plan, facilitate, assess, reflect, um, just using that when discussing it with staff, just to show like it's a continual process. It's not like we make these decisions, we go through it, review it, and then that's it, we're done. And that's the end all be all. Obviously, you know, we're constantly changing, especially in some of our, you know, content areas, you're constantly changing stuff because new information is coming up, new skills are coming up for our kids. So, um, you know, just keeping that in mind, using that graphic, I thought would be good. I was thinking right away, that's something I would use with my staff. 
Nice. Yeah, it's something we're really trying to do is to like have the whole process mirror what teachers are doing and what it's looking in, like in the classroom because um, nothing is ever perfect the first time you do it, right? We always have to take a step back, assess, sometimes reassess multiple times, reflect on what's happening, plan for a revision, and then do a revision. I mean, hello, COVID. If any, we learned anything from COVID, it's that even the greatest plans with the best or the like most potential sometimes get thrown awry. So. And to add to that too, Devin, I think that, you know, if you, you talk about that graph that you just did, and then you show on slide on page six of that, and you look, just look at in each year of standard um, implementation, how many times you see the word adjust or um, monitor or revisit, right? We're constantly going back and saying, hey, like, are these something that are, are still, uh, are they still current? Are they still something that's going to meet the immediate needs of our students to create those productive right, community members that are going to be able to access any type of um, job or to be work ready when they turn 18 or when they leave uh, post sec early K-12. So I think it just shows that it's constantly in an iteration mode. Okay, well, you guys have access to the current draft of the standards of, um, implementation framework. Like, like Janie said, please never hesitate to reach out to us. We're happy to answer questions. We want to answer questions. And um, we wanna make sure that we've included everything in there. And by people asking us questions, it helps us know if there's something that we've missed that um, we just, we didn't put it in writing or we need to consider. So with that, we're going to shift to a shift in instruction. And I believe that's you, Janie, right? Yes, that's me. Well, and all of us, because we, we're a team here. Um, so when we talk about shift, we're going to have you actually look at an article. Um, and when we talk about what is shifting instruction and thinking about reimagining learning, how many of us have heard, right, that those two terms um, over the last few years that, right, learning, education, it needs to be reimagined. Um, we know We've been we've been teaching students for hundreds of years, right? And so some of and some of our classrooms still look the same as they did 200 years ago, and that's not what I would say effective use of anybody's time. Um, not necessarily bad, but just because you know the adage where it's, it's not broke, don't fix it. That doesn't necessarily work here, right? It may not be broke, but are we getting the best results? Are our students learning? Are our students being the best possible versions of themselves? And are we giving them the utmost every opportunity possibility to do that. So if you could um, go ahead and you, you can scan it or use the bit.ly and you're gonna see this article um, and it's called Reimagine Learning. Again, we're gonna give you a few minutes to, to scan this article. Um, and then if we can, did everybody get this? And if we could put this into the chat, Jackie, could you put that into the chat just in case they did not get it? Did everybody, does everybody have the article that pop up for you? If no, we'll make sure we put it in the chat and then you can access it. It's almost there, it's loading. Okay. And you should be able to, I'm gonna double check, but go take your camera and just go right to the screen and it should pull up and you can then pull it up on your phone or have it on your computer. So this is the whole study. Um, it is an, ex an excerpt of actually Radical Departure, which was a 90 page um, article, and this is an expert just about what does that look like to reinvent and um, kind of reimagine learning. I'm going to give you about six minutes or so to scan this article. It's a, it's not a very long article, but what I would like you to pay attention to is page number four. So you're going to scan the article, really focus on that chart on page four, because I'm only going to give you six minutes. And then in this, um, either however you wanna do it, because we are such a small group, um, we're just gonna share this. Um, you're going to find one word, one phrase, and one paragraph that resonates with you or stands out. We're gonna then just gonna share those thoughts with our group. Um, and then uh, we uh, will think about, right, as a, um, well, not as a table, but um, we do this also live. So um, we would have you actually write a tweet on what this looks like. So what we're gonna have you do is, um, you're gonna share one word, one phrase, and one paragraph. And then I'm gonna have you in the hashtag 
do a hashtag of your one word of what this means to you. And it can't be reimagined learning. Like that can't be your hashtag. It has to be something different. So with that, I'm going to give you six minutes. Again, you may turn your cameras off if you want to scan the article. Again, really focus on that chart and think about those couple thoughts. Your one word, a phrase, and then a paragraph. And then I'll get you back in six minutes. I just want to say I have to go. I know that um, I just wanted to pop in and I know that uh, not to just receive credit because I know I'm leaving, so I can't, but I may just pop on later. I just wanted to um, just pop in, but I got to go get my daughter. So anyway, oh, thank sure. you for the small bit. It was, it was great information. I wish I could stay the whole time. Thanks. And so, and just Jessica, these will yeah. be posted on, on the YouTube, our YouTube channel. You can access this at any time too, to finish it out if, if you do. Oh, great. How do yes. we have access to that? Um, I will make sure. Did you fill in your attendance sheet? I uh, that's I, in there because I, then, I know. I then, I have your, then I have your information and I can send you the recording. Okay. But then it's also on our YouTube. So if you don't follow NDE on the on YouTube, do that and it, this will be posted on there as well. I didn't know that. Okay, great. Thank you so much. This is great. Yeah. yeah. I hope you come to more. I will. Bye bye. Thank Take you. Care.
Okay, that is six minutes. All right, and so um, who would anybody like to start? Casey or Devin, which one are you gonna start? If you wanna just share your one word, kind of one phrase, and then your paragraph, or just like, or even all what's, what's resounding with you, and then in your chat, put your tweet. What's your tweet that, that, that like few words hashtag that you're gonna bridge that gap? So whoever wants to start can start. So the, my first word I wrote down was relevant. And then my phrase was purpose-driven learning. Mm. Um, the paragraph that I liked was, I'm trying to see, it was on page six. Mm -hmm. I just really liked the part where it said, young people are motivated and supported to explore their own talents, passions, and infinite possibilities while grounded in a sense of collective as opposed to individual success. Actually, I like that whole paragraph. Yeah. And that's kind of like an, it's like an amen, right? Like think about if our kids left every single classroom <laughs> leaving with that, like in their heads. And then if you were to hashtag, what's your one hashtag that you would do to bridge kind of the ideas of this article with what education and the future of learning should look like? Um, I think I would stick to the purpose-driven learning. Yeah. To me, that, that really stood out to me the most. I, I, I would, I would agree when I, when I did this article, um, we did an actual an hour and a half just on these little pages and we really dive deep into it. And so one of the things that I would just say from my takeaway was, was very relevant, but then is everybody in our community ready to read that article and ready to then act on it? So that would be something that I, I, I thought I took away with to think about Devin, what about you? Sorry, I had to mute myself. I have two people that are trying to contribute to the discussion. Um, no worries. Really for, so they're, I don't know why they're trying to contribute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, better early than never, I guess. <laughs> so I really liked, um, I really concentrate on the little chart things. So I love the teachers as guides to knowledge. Uh, I love that real world kind of thing. Um, he agrees or she agrees. I yeah, mean, she agrees. Yeah. yeah okay. The horse that's now running off. Um, and then I like the question. It was like in that same strand, the questions that were asked, like about what would it look like if you got rid of grade levels, artificial separation of subject areas? Because like one of the things that I kind of struggle with is like, you know, we, we say like, oh, by this time, the kids should know this or they should have this knowledge. Can we stop for a second, please? Thank you. Um, and, so, and so with that, you kind of think like, well, what about those kids that aren't getting certain concepts? And lots of times we'll just push them along when really like, all right, if they're not getting this concept, they're not getting these building blocks, these pieces, but yet we still are like, okay, well, now it's time for you to go into this grade or to go into this subject. Um, what kind of service are we doing for these kids? So really, rather than stressing about like, oh, by this age or by this grade level, we should be, you know, doing this, really focusing on, all right, how do I make sure that this kid is getting kind of the skills and that base knowledge before they get into the next level? Yeah, and I just, I think you, you hit on something like really, really poignant for me too, is that right? You're really emphasizing that learning isn't on the timeline. Mm -hmm. You can't say you only have two days to do this and you better get it. And if you don't, then you get a zero. What is that all about, right? Like when did we stop losing the focus on the actual learning of the human? And when did the pacing guide become the most important aspect of what teaching is? And so I think that you really hit like a good nail on the head, right? Like that what if we didn't have these boundaries? What if we didn't have, right, these little boxes that everybody had to be in and we just were like saying, no, these are the skills we know that's necessary for students to be successful adults in whatever pathway, in whatever career that they choose. Um, but that requires a lot of um, um, release of control, right? And so you have to be willing to say, I'm going to, to let my kids lead the way. And I think as we as research is coming out, especially over the last five years, and especially because of after COVID, we know 
our kids, our teachers, all humans, anybody in education, we like flex and flexibility and we like choice. And so I don't think we can put that lid back on and say, no more, go back because there is no going back. We know that we do need to reimagine what learning looks like. And I think that you both have really mentioned some kind of key points, like right off the bat. Um, well, how would you, what, what would be your, your hashtag, Devin? What's that, what's your, your one hashtag that you would do? So we have purpose-driven learning and we have. Well, I was just going to go back to the teacher as guide or guide to knowledge. That's what I would go with. Uh, so like teachers, a guide to knowledge. Yeah, we, Jackie and I are perpetually tossing around that we actually want to get rid of the word teacher. Like we want to let teacher die. You know, it, it, it was, it was what it was, but we want to move on to really, really about uh, the facilitator and that really your adult in the classroom is guiding that learning. Exactly like what you're saying, David, they're guiding that knowledge or facilitating um, what they're doing. Mentors. I love it. Right. Like teacher actually implies I talk, you listen, right. Teacher implies I'm the one that knows everything and I'm going to impart on you, but is that always true in every single case? Um, let me just ask you, would you use this with your teachers? Would you use this in your staff? Um, could this be uh, something that you could use either in a staff meeting to talk with teachers about how it, things could look different in their classroom, maybe how you could think about school-wide initiatives um, or things that you could use in your class or your school to maybe re-look at what learning is and how to define what learning could be? And if you were, like, how, how would you want to use this? We do a retreat every May at the end of the school year. And we go to a cabin in the woods. And a lot of the things that what we do is we talk about um, how we can be better for ourselves, but also how that in turn helps us with our students. This I think would be so good to take and read and just sit and hash it out and talk about it. And like you said, just do a really a deep dive with it and look at how we, what are we doing now that matches this and what are some changes we need to make? Oh my gosh, I love that. I love the retreat in the woods. You're getting thought in open air nature. How wonderful. What about you, Devin? I still can't get over that you're, do, you're doing a retreat. I want to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, there was a minute. You have to process, right? Process yeah, for a second. Like, wow. Uh, so I definitely, I would probably use it because we have a couple of changes that are coming up right now. Like we kind of in our school are trying to change a little bit of our culture, change a little bit of our instruction. We had a lot of teacher turnover this year. Um, and I think what we're trying to do is like a reset and definitely kind of, I liked some of the questions that were asked throughout that article and kind of doing a reset of like, hey, how about you reflect on this and having discussion and like, how can we kind of utilize some of these ideas and some of these questions to reinvent kind of what we're trying to do in the classroom? Yeah, that's amazing. Um, well, you do have access now to this article. So you do have this, we will we will um, be sharing with you the materials. So all the materials that we use in all of our admin series workshops will be shared with all of our participants. Really, they'll be shared with everybody. Um, and if you are interested in, in um, having, some, having a protocol to really deep dive that, don't hesitate to reach out and I can send it to you. And if you wanna use that with your staff. Um, but with this, we're going to, um, we are firm believers um, as Kathy, Jackie and I give a lot of um, online learning because we're all over and work with digital distance learning is that anytime we're doing any type of learning, right, you need a minute, you need a brain break, you need to get up and be able to walk away. So um, about five minutes, I'm going to give you go ahead and turn your cameras off. This includes even us. So Jackie and Kathy will do the same. Walk away five minutes, come back, get a drink, use the restroom, do what you need to do, and we'll be back.
and why we're doing this, why we're doing this then is that we want to make sure that we do shift in, that instruction and in in what it looks like, but we always want to make sure that we do have the support materials and the resources necessary for our educators to actually make that transition in a timely manner, but also in a manner where, right, our educators themselves want to continue working and learning and doing what's best for their students. So to kind of dive into a resource that we have developed um, this year and will be extending over the next couple years is our model curriculum. And with that, Jackie's going to review some, some of the benefits and overviews of what we're doing with model curriculum and um, what will be available for educators starting this month. Mm -hmm. Jackie? Thank you. Um, so on the screen, you can see a word cloud that was created with all of the words that show up in the template for model curriculum. Now, the model curriculum was really designed to fill this gap that teachers were expressing like they might have materials like we'll use science for instance they might have science materials but maybe they're out of date maybe they're like four or five years ago um or old or social studies that's a common one or language arts or all these other things or um we see it a lot in computer science which is my area and they're like, well, I know I have to teach it, but I don't know how to teach it. And I don't know what to teach outside of what the standards tell me. So we've developed this model curriculum, which really is this turnkey um, product that teachers can use. And if you look at this word cloud, what's the biggest word you see? Resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's resources because we want it to be a resource for teachers, right? So go ahead and go to the next slide, please, Kathy. The model curriculum includes everything that you see pictured here. We have learning targets. We have the standards aligned. We have essential questions. We have assessment, both formative and summative assessment. We have integration to technology. We have project-based learning incorporated in there. We have, um, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to pull up a picture of one because there's so much in there. We have family engagement. We have performance tasks. We have resources, supplemental resources, and then primary resources. Um, learning objectives. It's literally everything is in there. It's incredible. We also have, um, connections to social emotional learning included. So next slide, please. These are the content areas and grade levels and subject areas that um, we plan to have ready in September, which is only a couple days away. Um, but and have it fully ready and accessible to all teachers. Um, so a lot of those areas, we try to target the areas where teachers tend to struggle with a little bit more, which of course, computer science, maybe fine arts, social studies was a big one. And then we have health. Next slide. So we have two examples that we're gonna show you. So this first one is econ. Uh, this is a high school, um econ i believe it's hard for me to see it's pretty small but um like a lot of teachers are maybe unfamiliar with the new um economic standards or financial literacy standards um and maybe they just need some support or they don't know where the resources are or they haven't seen them this model curriculum will help them support that and then the and next Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I just I'm, I just I can't help myself because I'm over social studies, but we do have the new requirement of econ. So now economics is a required course to graduate with in high school. So all students starting this year must have econ and financial literacy as on their transcript to graduate high school. This is new. This is new to our teachers. They may not have the resources and materials available in order to do that. And so we thought it was really important that the areas that we started with are our standards that are the most recently adopted. So they have they have the less likely chance of changing, which is why we wanted to start with those materials versus um, right, like ELA, because in ELA and math have actually been around for 12 years. So the likelihood of those being revisited and updated are um, more 
more tangible than something like social studies and that computer science that were just adopted a few years ago. But this is just something that we wanted to have. So with the, the economics model curriculum, it is a full semester ready to go, covers every standard for economics and financial literacy with everything in there. Um, everything that a teacher would need to actually teach economics for this course is there. It's free, <laughs> free, available, accessible, um, all the resources are open and free, so it's free for everyone forever. Mm -hmm. um, perfect. Thanks, Janie, for elaborating on that. Um, and then the next one is a computer science example. This is third grade. Um, this was a big need and it like a big thing that we needed to provide for teachers, especially those elementary teachers who are required to teach computer science, but probably did not have any computer science training in their pre-service teaching and may have participated in some professional development, but may still be not quite clear on the standards or don't know any other resources out there, all that kind of stuff. So you can see on here, we really tried to include a lot of live links to open um, resources, all the OERs. Um, so literally all teachers will have to do is pull this up read it, click on the link. It takes them everywhere or like to each place that they need to go. You can also see that there's some cross-curricular um, connections included in there. Um, this one shows math, ELA, and science. Um, I think that's about it. Did I miss anything, Janie, on these? I don't think so. Um, okay. like you'll see kind of where you saw what areas that we have. And so you can really kind of go through these, but these are, and the thing is, is they're here for teachers. Teachers can pick and choose. Um, they don't have to teach it from like right from A to Z, but we try to be as encompassing and as comprehensive as possible. Yeah. Okay, next one. So how might the model curriculum look at your school? Oh, this is the one thing I forgot to add. So within each grade level, or yeah, within each grade level, in addition to the unit guides, we have one, at least one full lesson, model lesson that teachers can then copy or um, duplicate with additional information or use however they feel it's most appropriate. Um, so how might this work at your school or in other schools or in your district? Um, it can work with PLCs because everybody's on a level playing field. Um, professional learning, for sure. You have a teacher that comes, I'm not sure how to do, like how to engage my families. What are some solutions? Or um, believe it or not, we get this a lot. Um, what's the difference between formative and summative assessment? And why do I have to have both? What's the purpose? It also looks at best practices in teaching, current best practices, not best practices from 1995 when I was in school, um, but like current best practices based on research. And then it can also be used for coaching and mentoring with students, or with, not with students, with teachers, um, because it provides a guide. It's like a framework for you. Um, because really our ultimate goal is student learning and student mastery and with a guide and a template we have something that we can base all the conversations around rather than just saying openly um how do you teach algorithms in third grade they have something in a curriculum that's provided for free that they can all talk about and then discuss well I taught it this way based off of my interpretation and I included this and how did our kids do and what's the best way. So that is a great use for model curriculum outside of just using it for unit guides. And then next slide. And then where will you find this? Which is like an almost segue into something Kathy's gonna dive into towards the end. Um, in Canvas, and I think Janie is going to talk about this more in depth later when we talk about Canvas, but we do have an information hub inside Canvas. Um, we have ones set up for curriculum directors and administrators, and then we also have stuff set up for 
teachers and we have the commons in there, all this stuff that Kathy and Jane are gonna talk about, but that's where all this information is going to be stored. So with that, what is this next slide? This one is just is what's next in model curriculum. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> I forgot about this one. It's been a day. Um, yeah, so we already talked about how we're rolling this out in September. Um, we're gonna have it open to everybody. We will continue to work on these, refine the ones that we already have, and then continually add additional areas. So the first thing is we want to make sure we have K-12 in social studies. Um, fine arts and health, I believe. Those are the current ones that we want to get, make sure we have them all really solid. And then we're going to pull in ELA and math and science. And world language is a new one also, isn't it, Janie? Yes, so we will doing just elementary for, fine, for ELA, math and science, and then um, essentially K-12 world language. Yeah. Um, and like you guys know, we're going to continue this professional learning series for administrators. Um, we feel it's pretty important because administrators sometimes get left out when it comes to professional development. Um, and then, oh, starting in November, we will have those monthly webinars. There's gonna be some uh, professional learning networks for educators to like, like, we really want people to be able to build their network so they have somebody to call, they have somebody to reach out to to bounce ideas off of, to ask questions, to share, to collaborate, um, all that stuff. So, Jane. another All right, another resource on top of the model curriculum is we are also um, in Canvas, we have the Nevada Course Access Partnership. Um, and at this point, our partnership is kind of what it says, it's all about how we're developing courses that will that every district can have access to. And so if you go to the next slide. Um, so what is this? This is really, so in 2020, um, with when COVID happened, we launched the Nevada Digital Learning Collaborative. And then this collaborative is we've built um, a strong resource, um, a system for our state on what does digital learning look like and how should digital learning be accessed and utilized in every single classroom. We then have built an extension of that into the course access partnership. So this partnership is where we are actually working with educators in our state and they're building rigorous, high quality, standard aligned courses that will be available um, throughout this year and then years to come um, that teachers can actually access and, and utilize in their class. So it can be done in a hybrid classroom. It can be done in blended learning. Um, it can be utilized right to support with guest teachers. So these are where we're building, again, full class, full courses. So it's like the model curriculum that we have, but then we're also having full wide courses that we'll, you'll be able to launch and then access within, um, within Canvas and then be able to use immediately. Your teachers can use them immediately in their classroom. So let's say you have a sub and, you're, and that's teaching this class, maybe it's a long-term sub. We will then hopefully have some support in some of these courses. We don't have every course immediately. Um, it does take a minute to develop courses, but we are in the process of, of writing essentially 20 to 30 courses right now. And then every year our hopes are to continually add five to 10 courses a year um, to where we're, we really do have a strong, um, strong 612 block. And then we'll hopefully add elementary uh, to that to that uh, course catalog. So if we go to the next slide, here you can start to see um, our adaptation of our course catalog. And this is where we do have some courses in the course Atmos partnership. When courses are added into this, this is when we um, have courses that um, we will, we will uh, be able to launch, if you will, it, it, that, that will be accessible. Um, these courses will be available within the next few weeks. Um, and we do build them out by semester. So there's semester courses at a time. Um, there, and it is a kind of smattering of courses. It, it wasn't where we tackled just ELA first. We did do a smattering of English and science and math, and we have computer science, and we have some electives, we have some CTE courses, and we're continuing to grow what that catalog is going to look like. So hopefully we can really help districts and classrooms and provide the support of actual courses that can be utilized in those classrooms. Next slide. 
So those courses right are in Canvas, and we know that that our state invested within Canvas, and so now we do have a statewide LMS, and every district and every charter school that is a public charter school, <coughs> excuse me, has access to Canvas. And one of the things we want to do is again more resources for your schools and classrooms. And uh, Kathy is going to kind of go through some some information quickly about Canvas and some some how tos with Canvas and where we're going to go next with Canvas. So Kathy, uh, Janie, do you want to cover this slide really quick? Or oh, sure, I can. So we do. So within Canvas itself, um, so within within Canvas, this is a learning management system. So this is where you can develop courses. Um, your teachers can develop courses, we can develop courses. This is a great system that's built on um, having a collective of resources and materials for educators to use in their classroom and to really store it right where any teacher can access it and, and uh, across the nation. So this is really gonna help build a network of teachers around not only our state, but the nation and really start working together. Right, we need to start working smarter, not harder. How can we start pulling in each other to help support each other? So we have lots of teacher resources. Um, <coughs> instructional materials are available through the Canvas Commons too, which Kathy will go over. We also have the NDE Professional Learning Catalog. And you'll notice in these two last two puzzle pieces, we do have bit.ly's and, and QR codes. And this is where you can actually access our professional learning catalog. So NDE has a, a catalog where all of our PL that will be coming out of NDE will be in our learning catalog. The catalog itself um, currently has about 15 different courses um, and they run from um, NEPF. We have one on SEL, social emotional learning. There's actually one on how to build a quality course, which is, I think Kathy actually helps facilitate that. And there's almost 200 people, teachers that have enrolled in that course um, in the last couple of weeks, actually. Uh, and so we're continuing to add courses on the catalog. These courses are on demand, they're free, and they're really at their own pace. Uh, and so teachers can take them when they want. Teachers will receive a, a certificate of completion afterwards. Once a course is completed and the course requirements have been maintained, a certificate will then be uh, uh, emailed to the educator. That can be used for state licensing, for renewal for licensing. Um, and then you can uh, you always need to talk to your districts about whether or not that would work for salary advancement. That's nothing that we have control over, that's at your districts. And then lastly, we have what we're, what we're calling the, the Nevada Educator Information Hub. And this hub is where all educators will have access to professional learning options, uh, curriculum and resources, um, student opportunities, and then just updates. And we can actually show you that. Um, Kathy, we can actually show that, you know, as we go through that, but you can kind of see and you can have access to that where that will just be updated regularly where, where new things are happening. So I would highly encourage um, individuals to go there and they can see, um, uh, you can see what's, what's new and what's happening in the state of Nevada. Good. So the first thing I know that, I know that at least one of you already, you know, your teachers in your school already uses cameras extensively, um, but there are, every school and every charter, um, you know, state charter school and every um, district within Nevada should have access to Canvas um, by now. And um, so we have a, a Canvas landing page for districts and charters. Uh, some people, they like to, once they start logging in, they'll, they'll, they'll bookmark that. But if you're unsure of where your login page is at, then I just kind of typed it in bold up here in, the end, uh, in blue that it would be doe.nv.gov slash home slash canvas. And then you would find your uh, district or your charter and you would choose that. And then you would come to your login. So um, you choose your district's link using the name, the username or password. Some people might be, again, this might be the first year that Canvas is being implemented with teachers and students. And so you might not know your user, or your teachers might not know that username or password, but that would come from the district or the school. Um, and I'm gonna demonstrate this in a second for also just to have it as part of this recording as people watch it. Um, but you can always, if you forget your password and you would tell your staff this, and they can always choose that forgot password to, re to request the reset. And then sometimes those people might need to contact the district or school Canvas admin to help with that password reset. 
So basically, I'm just going to open up a new window here. Um, but we go to that doe.canvas.home, and hopefully I'm not logged in. But you can see there is an extensive list of districts and charters. We have Clark County on here all the way down to Washout, and we are adding to this list. So you can see every charter school that is has a canvas and all of the districts. So like, for example, for me, um, I would choose my school or district, and then I would type in my email address and log in. And then again, if I forget what my password is, just click that forgot password. And just as I said before, if someone, if it doesn't send a reset email, then that's where that person or staff or teacher or student that they need to contact their school or district um, Canvas person for help. That's basically um, how you log into Canvas. Any questions? Yeah. Okay, I, I know Casey that you guys are using it there at Leadership Academy of Nevada. Um, but we do have a lot of new schools and charters that are coming on this year. So, and they're actually starting to use it because we're using this. Um, every teacher should have an account, correct, Janie? Um, because this is our a, a place where they can get to that professional learning and take that professional learning and and they can use it with students but that was the main point of having all these staff and teacher accounts and so we're going full out with you know getting those logins getting everybody access so they can take that professional learning and also get courses and move into using this with students so Canvas Commons is another um, area that we have, and some people are familiar, some people aren't. It is basically just a repository of um, digital resources. You can uh, look for courses, for full courses. You can look for pages. You can look for um, a module. Um, all kinds of things are on there, but when you go to Commons, and I'm gonna demonstrate this, but when you go to Commons, you're first taken to a, a repository that goes that it's an all. So anybody who's posted within the United States, I'm not sure if it goes out, but I know that it's definitely within the United States. It might go out, but I doubt it. But you're going to see, and I think there's like 200,000 plus courses or objects, um, you know, learning objects is what we call them. And um, so when someone goes to Commons, you got to be very careful to what you're looking at. So you'd want people to review what they're looking at and not just download stuff and then start using it with kids. It's very important that um, those things are vetted. And um, that's why we are building our own um, NB or NBDOE, Nevada Department of Education, Commons. And we are putting all of our resources there. Um, for any teacher in the state of Nevada to access. So we're not putting it up on the, for everybody. We're not putting it all. So anybody in the whole United States can see it. We are putting it exclusively within uh, the state of Nevada or within our consortium. And, sorry, I should use the word and. So it's in both places when you search. So this is where we will have those courses that Janie was talking about with the NVCAP program, where we'll have full courses that we are having contracted educators in Nevada. And it's kind of cool because we have educators that work at charter schools that are writing these courses for us. We have educators that are working in Northern Nevada. I mean, they work in various places. So it's kind of exciting not to just have one district source everything. We are trying to use sources throughout and use those educators so we have different experiences um, or experienced teachers to create these courses. So as Janie was talking about, uh, the current currently most of those courses are high school courses and we have quite a few, quite a few listed and um, more um, are being added to our list every day and um, adding more course writers um, to that list as we want to get as many courses as possible up on this commons for um, any teacher, again, in the state of Nevada to use. So we have a lot of cores, a lot of electives, 
um, we vet these courses um, and we quality check them. So we use templates. We have worked with Canvas and then myself and we vet, look through. We just don't let people throw stuff in a Canvas course. Everything has to follow a certain guideline and has to meet um, a quality check of accessibility and um, U, uh, UDL guidelines, universal design guidelines, and um, it has to be written for the student. So what we've done is we are creating asynchronous courses because it's easier to take a course that could be fully done online and then adapt that. A teacher can take that course and they can adapt it down to a synchronous situation in a blended or hybrid classroom. Some people just call that face-to-face, -face, you know, if they just want to use it in a face-to-face, -face, which is, I kind of call that a hybrid, um, that, you know, part of that hybrid where they're just using it with their kids in a face-to-face -face situation. And then the blended, um, you know, where they can, you know, flip their classroom or something like that and use a blended model. But we know from my experiences of writing online courses, and I've been writing online courses since like 2014 and worked in an online high school for five years and also work at a university where I teach um, how to write courses and stuff and blended learning that um, it's so much easier to write it asynchronously and then adapt it for that classroom environment um, so that um, it can, rather than the opposite way. So these courses are written for students. They're um, written for a student to sit down and directed to them, not to an adult. Um, we will uh, we include teacher directions in there um, in our courses on how to use these classes that we are going to put up on Commons, and um, probably um, getting some video out there that there will even be see some video instruction on how to use the course. And um, some other things we might be thinking about out there that I'm kind of thinking about maybe even doing some live training on, on uh, teaching some teachers across the state on how to go through a course, you know, that, that may be a science course that's been written so they can attend. Um, I did that with a computer science course I wrote and taught uh, quite a few teachers at Clark County how to use that course. And it was like a three hour training, but they all walked away with like, I know how to use this course. So um, those are some things that as a state we can offer um, to provide those trainings on for your teachers on, you know, how do I use this in, in my face-to-face -face classroom? How do I adapt this? Um, any questions that you guys might have? I'm gonna show you where these are at. Nothing, Casey, Devin, no. Um, so how do we access this? Some of you might know how to do this. I'm going to go ahead and show you, but I'm going to show you the Commons button where it's located. Um, it defaults to public, um, so I'm going to demonstrate that. And then to find our stuff that Nevada Department of Ed, you just have to start typing Nevada Department and it should start searching for it. And then you can preview a course. And again, as I said on the last slide, we really want to encourage these teachers to you know, preview each page, read a course if they decide to download it, into a um, um, into a sandbox course where they can kind of you know play with that course and investigate it. We want them, and we really encourage them to look through every page of that course and make sure uh, that they know the course. But here's the other thing: once they download it, it's theirs. So if they want to make you know it make some edits or add to that course, they may do so. Okay, but we're writing these courses to cover the standards and um, on that. So let me go demo that really quick. Um, let me go back here to log into my Canvas. And you guys, if you have questions, just, just ask. Just turn your mic on and ask. And of course, it's taken a while. Okay, so over here on the left-hand side, we have the Commons button. Everybody should have that button. And so when you click Commons, this takes you to the Commons for Everywhere. So it has over 238,000 different results with everything. So what we're saying to do is just type in uh, Nevada Department, and you can see I already have it there. 
of education. And then you will find the repository that we are building that we have vetted and we have gone through to make sure they meet standards, that they're using templates. And um, also on this, we also have um, secondary templates that you guys can use and also elementary templates. We've paid for these. They're available for anybody in the state of Nevada to use. Um, and so this is just some of the courses that we've got. We have others that are ready to go. And um, we just have to go through that final step of approval before I put them up there. So there might be close to about 20 courses here within a couple weeks or more posted to here. I've got science, uh, which other ones? I've got um, science eight. I have the geosciences up there. I got biology. Um, there's the film studies. Um, I have quite a few like algebra one, algebra two, all those courses, a lot of those courses that you see in that uh, catalog, they will be up here within a few weeks after they've gone through a vetting process. So um, that's- Yeah, we should, and just, and just so that, that we know, so over the next 30 days, we will have a lot of these courses um, released on on our commons as Kathy did show you. And so you can see just, we just wanna reiterate that they're by semesters. So we do make sure that we do it by semester because then when you wanna utilize it, um, the the flow of the course is, is not supposed to be like you pick and choose. So um, it is a full course. So that's just why you will see that. And if your teachers are going to use this in the whole, it does think with infinite campus. And that's why we need to we need to divide them into semesters. So from there, Kathy, just because of time, I know that we want to kind of be done in about 12 or so minutes. So there's any overarching questions. Um, do you want to jump to the catalog? Yeah, yeah. I'll jump over there really quick. So just to kind of show you guys really, if you don't understand how this works, just to kind of demonstrate that, if I choose a course, you would just have your, and again, we can, if you need us to train, we can do some training with your teachers. I have no problem doing that. But they can open that course up and they can actually click on anything, um, any page in here and they can preview it. So uh, they could preview something and they would, they can uh, actually go page by page. Now the formatting here does looks different than the formatting in the actual course. Um, but you will see that as they click through, they can actually read through it and they can see how this course is kind of set up. Um, so that's just kind of how that works. Let's go back to here. Okay, so our professional learning catalog. This is super, super exciting. It's one of my favorite parts. So in your Canvas, on the far left side, there's the ND, NDEPL button. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate um, while I'm talking about this. So we have this NDPL button, which is NDE Professional Learning. A lot of people don't know what it is. But when you click on it, it should take you, and sometimes it, remem it memorizes that, hey, you're there, and it takes you right to the catalog, but sometimes it'll take a user to that landing page and then they have to click their district or charter school again. But once they click that again, it'll take them to this page. This is the, like we've been working on this a lot, but this is where your teachers can take free courses um, self-paced. I just put this one up literally a week ago and I have 117 people so far is when I counted as of this morning. Um, but this is like a self-driven course. If it takes them till next May to do it, then they can have until next May to do it. It's self-paced. Once they have completed it, then um, they will get a certificate. We've got all these different courses that um, we have on here with NEPF. There's the quality review program. This is for CTE. And we are adding more. We're working more with discoveries, adding some stuff on here. Um, knowledge Works, right, Janie? I think is having, they're going to add some stuff on here for training. I have another class that I need to get up on technology, um, some technology tools for educators, it's called. So anything posted up here um, will um, show, um, will be free. And then that department supports it. So the yeah. SEAD is supported by a different department. 
So there's going to be a few knowledge works classes which are on competency based learning. So we'll have those modules up. We'll have modules relating to there'll be another uh, professional learning for discovery education. Um, and then we're continuously add ones as far as um, even content based ones. So this this is also a catalog that will be growing over um, hopefully many, many, many years to come. Yeah, it's going to keep growing. So I put the link in the chat. But like if I was going to enroll in a course, um, if I just I would just choose one and then it would just, it just has the enroll now. Now, this is I guess enrollment's not open right now, but I would just click enroll now and then it enrolls me. And once I'm enrolled in that course, it'll show back up on my dashboard here. OK, so once so it's a simple enroll and then the course will show up. So we have a lot of um, courses. We're adding more. Um, all the time. There's a lot of departments within the Nevada Department of Education that they're working on courses too for, to present for teachers. So I already demonstrated how you get to the catalog. You just do that button. I also put the direct link in the chat area. And there is some, if you're with Clark County School District, it's probably going to show and ask you to log in again and choose your district. Um, and then I showed you how to enroll. And then that course goes to your dashboard. And then you have all the time you need. Um, some you have to look at the course. Some courses it, it might be a longer period, some courses might be a shorter period of time. So people always need to read, but those are free and they're out there for um, your teachers to take. Um, the next thing, um, I think I already kind of discussed this that um, once it's on your dashboard, and then Janie already discussed the certificates of how those certificates will come out. And then there you go, Janie. All right, awesome. So we are, are um, wrapping up today. So we do have some just two um, major pieces of professional learning that we do want to highlight. We have um, our what's coming up November 19th is we do have a teaching and learning conference. And this is for all educators across our state. This is for public schools, private schools, charter schools, all teachers, coaches, administrators, district administrators, counselors, um, tutors. It doesn't matter who. It's for all educators. Um, this is going to be held on November 19th from 830 to 4. Um, it will be uh, uh, offered for professional learning hours and also for college credit. So if you do want a uh, college credit, there will be additional work after for the 15 hours for one credit. One credit does cost $21. So if you are seeking college credit, you can get a credit for essentially 20 bucks. Um, or if you're not, it is it is then free. There will be lots of raffle prizes, um, really cool raffle prizes, actually. Like we're really stoked about our raffle prizes this year. Um, very exciting. But what is going to be unique with this conference is we do have about 60 to 70 different sessions of national organizations um, that will be coming, um, as well as um, other individuals doing presentations in multiple content areas. So we will have sessions in all nine core content areas as well as for STEM, um, we have just digital tools in general. Um, there will be a, a three session on Canvas really where um, that it will be broken down to how to build a course and then actually given a sandbox to start playing around with the course with really hands-on support. Um, we'll have Nearpod and then how to do a training within Nearpod and then again, a begin to build a Nearpod um, lesson. We do have presentations coming from OER, from um, OER from um, the Gates Foundation, from um, Ed Puzzle, from Wakelet, from um, Project WET, which is a, a science um, well, um, organization within Nevada, um, multiple areas within CS, computer science, we'll have financial literacy, um, economics. We really have a lot of really awesome sessions because we really want to be able to support all teachers K-12 in the state. And then to support administrators. So we're really excited um, for this conference. This is essentially the first one that we're going to be doing. Uh, it is virtual. It's a virtual conference. So everybody everybody across the state can, can attend. It's very difficult to hold face to face to make sure that we're inclusive of all teachers around the state of Nevada. So we will maintain this virtually. Then we also will be continuing our admin professional learning series. So you will see the QR codes for both. You can actually register and continue to register for the admin series. Um, again, both are for PL hours and both are for SEU. 
uh, college credit. Um, we will actually put, I have the flyer, so I will put the flyer um, for our teaching and learning conference in the chat. Um, and it's also on our professional learning calendar. So there's a lot of ways where educators across our state can continue with a lot of free on demand professional learning to really help improve their craft. Next slide. On the professional learning page, um, if you go um, to that page, we actually, and you see of the QR code here with the with the bit.ly, um, we do ask, we'd like to hear what your suggestions are. What are things that, that you want, you specifically? What are things that your teachers need? What are things that your school needs? What are things that your district needs? Um, we like to hear those voices so that we can start to really um, formulate and deliver professional learning that's hands-on um, and really immediate and relevant to what you need at your school site. Next slide. So here are our contact information. Um, feel free to contact us, email us with any questions. 